The Integrated Truss Structure of the International Space Station consists of a linear arranged sequence of connected trusses on which various unpressurized components are mounted such as logistics carriers, radiators, solar arrays, and other equipment. It supplies the ISS with a bus architecture. It is approximately 110 meters long and is made from aluminum and stainless steel. Topic: Truss components. All truss components were named after their planned end positions: Z for zenith, S for starboard, and P for port, with the number indicating the sequential position. The S0 truss might be considered a misnomer, as it is mounted centrally on the zenith position of destiny and is neither starboard nor port side. Manufacturing Most ISS truss segments were fabricated at the Marshall Space Flight Center and the Michoud Assembly Facility. NASA contractors such as Boeing were contracted to fabricate some elements. The trusses were then transported or shipped to Kennedy Space Center's Space Station Processing Facility for final assembly and checkout. The structural framework were made using several manufacturing processes, including the investment casting, steel hot rolling, friction stir and TIG welding processes. Z1 truss The first truss piece, the Z1 truss, launched aboard STS-92 in October 2000. It contains the control moment gyroscope CMG assemblies, electrical wiring, communications equipment, and two plasma contactors designed to neutralize the static electrical charge of the space station. Another objective of the Z-1 truss was to serve as a temporary mounting position for the P-6 truss and solar array until its relocation to the end of the P-5 truss during STS-120. Though not a part of the main truss, the Z-1 truss was the first permanent lattice work structure for the ISS, very much like a girder, setting the stage for the future addition of the station's major trusses or backbones. While the bulk of the Z-1 truss is unpressurized, it features a common berthing mechanism CBM port that connects its nadir to the zenith port of Unity and contains a small pressurized dome that allowed astronauts to connect electrical ground straps between Unity and the truss without an EVA. In addition, the dome inside the CBM of Z1 can be used as storage space. The Z1 truss also features a forward facing manual berthing mechanism MBM ring. This MBM is not a port and is not pressurized or electrically powered, but it can be operated with a handheld tool to berth any passive CBM to it. The Z-1 truss's MBM was used only once, to temporarily hold PMA-2, while the Destiny Lab was being berthed onto the Unity node during STS-98. Since the installation of the nearby S-0 truss in April 2002, access to the MBM has been blocked. In October 2007, the P-6 truss element was disconnected from Z-1 and moved to P-5. P-6 will now be permanently connected with P-5. The Z-1 truss is now solely used to house the CMGs, communications equipment and the plasma contactors. Furthermore Z-1 connects now solely to Unity node 1 and no longer houses other space station elements. In December 2008, the Ad Astra rocket company announced an agreement with NASA to place a flight test version of its VASIMR ion thruster on the station to take over reboost duties. In 2013, Ad Astra announced specific plans to place the thruster module, named Aurora, on top of the Z-1 truss in 2015. NASA and Ad Astra signed a contract for development of the VASIMR engine for up to three years in 2015. This testing of the VX200 SSTM VASMIR engine for up to 100 hours and 100 kilowatts. 
However, in 2015 NASA ended plans for flying the VF-200 to the ISS. A NASA spokesperson stated that the ISS was not an ideal demonstration platform for the desired performance level of the engines. An example of a spacecraft that used an ion thruster to maintain its orbit was the Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer, whose engine allowed it to maintain a very low orbit. S0 truss The S0 truss, also called the Center Integrated Truss Assembly Starboard Zero Truss, forms the center backbone of the space station. It was attached on the top of the Destiny Laboratory module during STS-110 in April 2002. S0 is used to route power to the pressurized station modules and conduct heat away from the modules to the S1 and P1 trusses. The S0 truss is not docked to the ISS, but is connected with four module to truss structure MTS stainless steel struts. Topic P1 S1 trusses. The P1 and S1 trusses, also called the port and starboard side thermal radiator trusses, are attached to the S0 truss and contain carts to transport the Canadarm2 and astronauts to work sites along the space station. They each flow 290 kilograms (637 pounds) of anhydrous ammonia through three heat rejection radiators. The S-1 truss was launched on STS-112 in October 2002 and the P-1 truss was launched on STS-113 in November 2002. Detailed design, test and construction of the S-1 and P-1 structures was conducted by McDonnell Douglas now Boeing, in Huntington Beach, CA. First parts were cut for the structure in 1996, and delivery of the first truss occurred in 1999. P-2, S-2 trusses The P-2 and S-2 trusses were planned as locations for rocket thrusters in the original design for Space Station Freedom. Since the Russian parts of the ISS also provided that capability, the reboost capability of the Space Station Freedom design was no longer needed at that location. So P-2 and S-2 were cancelled. P-3, P-4, S-3, S-4 truss assemblies The P-3, P-4 truss assembly was installed by the Space Shuttle Atlantis STS-115 mission, launched September 9, 2006, and attached to the P-1 segment. The P-3 and P-4 segments together contain a pair of solar arrays, a radiator and a rotary joint that will aim the solar arrays, and connects P-3 to P-4. Upon its installation, no power was flowing across the rotary joint, so the electricity generated by the P-4 solar array wings was only being used on the P-4 segment, and not the rest of the station. Then in December 2006 a major electrical rewiring of the station by STS-116 routed this power to the entire grid. The S-3, S-4 truss assembly, a mirror image of P3, P4, was installed on June 11, 2007 also by Space Shuttle Atlantis during flight STS-117, Mission 13A and mounted to the S-1 truss segment. Major P3 and S3 subsystems include the Segment to Segment Attach System SSAS, Solar Alpha Rotary Joint SARJ, and Unpressurized Cargo Carrier Attach System UCCAS. 
The primary functions of the P3 truss segment are to provide mechanical, power and data interfaces to payloads attached to the two UCCAS platforms, axial indexing for solar tracking, or rotating of the arrays to follow the sun, via the SARJ, movement and work site accommodations for the mobile transporter. The P3, S3 primary structure is made of a hexagonal shaped aluminum structure and includes four bulkheads and six longerons. The S3 truss also supports express logistics carrier locations, first to be launched and installed in the 2009 time frame. Major subsystems of the P4 and S4 photovoltaic modules PVM include the two solar array wings SOAR, the photovoltaic radiator PVR, the alpha joint interface structure AJIS, and modified rocketdyne truss attachment system MRTAS, and beta gimbal assembly BGA. P5, S5 trusses The P5 and S5 trusses are connectors which support the P6 and S6 trusses, respectively. The P3, P4 and S3, S4 truss assembly's length was limited by the cargo bay capacity of the space shuttle, so these small connectors are needed to extend the truss. The P-5 truss was installed on December 12, 2006 during the first EVA of mission STS-116. The S-5 truss was brought into orbit by mission STS-118 and installed on August 11, 2007. <laughs> P-6, S-6 trusses The P6 truss was the second truss segment to be added, because it contains a large solar array wing that generated essential electricity for the station, prior to activation of the SOAR on the P4 truss. It was originally mounted to the Z1 truss and had its SOAR extended during STS-97, but the SOAR was folded, one half at a time, to make room for the SOARs on the P4 and S4 trusses, during STS-116 and STS-117 respectively. Shuttle mission STS-120 assembly mission 10A detached the P-6 truss from Z-1, remounted it on the P-5 truss, redeployed its radiator panels and attempted to redeploy its saws. One saw 2B was deployed successfully but the second saw 4B developed a significant tear that temporarily stopped deployment at around 80%. This was subsequently fixed and the array is now fully deployed. A later assembly mission the out of sequence STS mounted the S6 truss on the S5 truss, which provided a fourth and final set of solar arrays and radiators. <laughs> Gallery of trusses Topic: Truss subsystems. Topic: Solar arrays. The International Space Station's main source of energy is from three of the four large U.S.-made photovoltaic arrays currently on the station, sometimes referred to as the solar array wings. Saw. The first pair of arrays are attached to the P-6 truss segment, which was launched and installed on top of Z-1 in late 2000 during STS-97. The P-6 segment was relocated to its final position, bolted to the P-5 truss segment, in November 2007 during STS-120. The second pair of arrays was launched and installed in September 2006 during STS-115, but they didn't provide electricity until STS-116 in December 2006 when the station got an electrical rewiring. A third pair of arrays was installed during STS-117 in June 2007. 
A final pair arrived mid-March 2009 on STS-119. More solar power was to have been available via the Russian-built Science Power platform, but it was cancelled. Each of the solar array wings are 34 meters (112 feet) long by 12 meters (39 feet) wide, and are capable of generating nearly 32.8 kilowatts of DC power. They are split into two photovoltaic blankets, with the deployment mast in between. Each blanket has 16,400 silicon photovoltaic cells, each cell measuring 8 cm by 8 cm, grouped into 82 active panels, each consisting of 200 cells, with 4,100 diodes. Each pair of blankets was folded like an accordion for compact delivery to space. Once in orbit, the deployment mast between each pair of blankets unfolds the array to its full length. Gimbals, known as the Beta Gimbal Assembly BGA, are used to rotate the arrays so that they face the sun to provide maximum power to the International Space Station. <laughs> <laughs> Solar Alpha Rotary Joint The alpha joint is the main rotary joint allowing the solar arrays to track the sun. In nominal operation, the alpha joint rotates by 360 degrees each orbit. However, see also night glider mode. One solar alpha rotary joint (SARJ) is located between the P3 and P4 truss segments and the other is located between the S3 and S4 truss segments. When in operation, these joints continuously rotate to keep the solar array wings on the outboard truss segments oriented towards the sun. Each SARJ is 10 feet in diameter, weighs approximately 2,500 pounds and can be rotated continuously using bearing assemblies and a servo control system. On both the port and starboard sides, all of the power flows through the Utility Transfer Assembly in the SARJ. Roll ring assemblies allow transmission of data and power across the rotating interface so it never has to unwind. The SARJ was designed, built and tested by Lockheed Martin and its subcontractors. The Solar Alpha rotary joints contain drive lock assemblies which allow the outer segments of the ITS to rotate and track the sun. A component of the DLA is a pinion which engages with the race ring that serves as a bull gear. There are two race rings and two DLAs in each SARJ providing on-orbit redundancy, however a series of space walks would be required to reposition the DLAs and the trundle bearing assemblies TBAs to utilize the alternate race ring. A spare DLA was brought to the ISS on STS-122. In 2007, a problem was detected in the starboard SARJ and in one of the two beta gimbal assemblies (BGA). Damage had occurred due to excessive and premature wear of a track in the joint mechanism. The SARJ was frozen during problem diagnosis, and in 2008, lubrication was applied to the track to address the issue. topic power conditioning and storage the sequential shunt unit ssu is designed to coarsely regulate the solar power collected during periods of insulation when the arrays collect power during sun pointing periods a sequence of 82 separate strings or power lines leads from the solar array to the ssu Shunting, or controlling, the output of each string regulates the amount of power transferred. The regulated voltage setpoint is controlled by a computer located on the IEA and is normally set to around 140 volts. The SSU has an overvoltage protection feature to maintain the output voltage below 200 volts DC maximum for all operating conditions. This power is then passed through the BMRRM to the DCSU located in the IEA. The SSU measures 32 by 20 inches by 12 
and weighs 185 pounds. The power storage system consists of a battery charge discharge unit (BCDU) and two nickel hydrogen battery assemblies. Each battery assembly consists of 38 lightweight nickel hydrogen cells and associated electrical and mechanical equipment. Each battery assembly has a nameplate capacity of 81 R and 4 kilowatt hours. This power is fed to the ISS via the BCDU and DCSU respectively. The batteries have a design life of 6.5 years and can exceed 38,000 charge – discharge cycles at 35% depth of discharge. Each battery measures 40 inches by 36 by 18 inches and weighs 375 pounds. Topic: Mobile base system. The mobile base system (MBS) is a platform mounted on the mobile transporter for the robotic arms Canadarm2 and Dextra, carrying them 108 meters down rails between the S3 and P3 truss. Beyond the rails, Canadarm2 can step over the alpha rotary joint and relocate to grapple fixtures on the S6 and P6 truss. During STS-120 astronaut Scott Parazinski rode the orbiter boom sensor to repair a tear in the 4B solar array. <laughs> Truss and solar array assembly sequence <laughs> Technical blueprints Topic. See also Science Power Platform — the cancelled truss structure of the Russian orbital segment Manufacturing of the International Space Station Assembly of the International Space Station List of manned spaceflights to the ISS <laughs>